Our chair is Sarah Tuck from the University of Gothenburg and we are joined by artists Bechat Omar Abdullah, Ignacio Acosta and Vary Sutherland who are all going to present on their artistic work which was commissioned by the Foundation and HDK Valand, University of Gothenburg in 2017 as part of a triptych of exhibitions with partner organisations in Lahore, Pakistan and Nicosia, Cyprus. So with no further ado, over to you, Sarah, and welcome to you all. Thank you. Um, and is everyone else, is this visible to everybody? Yes, yes, that's all good. Okay, fantastic. So I'm just going to uh, start with a, a, a brief overview of the project itself. So this was actually a postdoc um, between the Hasselblad Foundation and uh, Gothenburg University. And uh, it was in response to, I came up with this title of Drone Vision. And the call was for an artist curator to respond to uh, photography and human rights. So I chose to look at uh, drone technologies. And as you'll notice from this, obviously it's in English, Swedish, uh, Greek and uh, Urdu, because in addition to uh, hosting an exhibition in Gothenburg, I, uh, there were simultaneous exhibitions in Nicosia and in Pakistan. And the reason for that, the nature of the, the commission of, of three artists in each of the three cities was I wanted to have some level of uh, precision around the kind of geopolitics of drone use. Um, so this was uh, the Sahul Alak uh, Gallery in Lahore, Pakistan, uh, the uh, Nicosia Municipal Arts Centre, Nicosia in Cyprus. And I chose Nicosia because because of the very nature of drone making complex, the idea of proximity and distance, and obviously a, a contested island uh, does similar uh, to that. Um, and this is Gothenburg. Um, in each of the three galleries, uh, the view from above of the three cities uh, was visible. Um, prior to the actual exhibitions, I hosted uh, three day long round tables. You might recognize some of the names here. Um, there were a number of people from different disciplines. So there were artists, uh, human rights lawyers, urban geographers, um, and cultural theorists. Um, each of the day long events were unchaired and I asked people to come, but not to present a paper, but simply to have a conversation because um, this is a kind of core to, to my work. I'm very interested in, in hosting disagreement. Um, these, uh, this in each uh, gallery, this is uh, in Pakistan, uh, there were the round tables were hosted audio stations so you could listen into the, the recordings of the day long conversations and also read the transcripts. You will notice though in the first image that I shared that uh, the audio station in Lahore uh, was not raised from the ground and that was because of the nature of the three artists that were commissioned for the exhibition in Lahore uh, and that the exhibition had a funeral uh, kind of a sensibility. So these were the names of the artists. Uh, so in Nicosia, Ran Slavin, uh, an Israeli artist, flew a drone watching a drone in a disused uh, former um, Israeli Defense Army kind of facsimile of a Palestinian village. Um, Efi Savidis did a durational project uh, following a family who was stateless. And Stelios Kalinico uh, looked at mapped the fortresses on the island of Cyprus. In Pakistan, you'll notice that it's three men, um, and that's contrary to how I normally work. And the reason for that, the three artists were in the language of the American military, were military aged targets. And they were all from the uh, federally administered tribal areas, which is to the north of Pakistan on the border with Afghanistan, and all had endured a drone warfare and drone surveillance. And at Hasselblad Center in Jotterberg in Sweden, there were the artists Avari Sutherland, 
Vejet Omar Abdullah and Ignacio Acosta and they in turn will start off with Vari um, are going to share with you uh, the nature of their artistic research. So over to you Vari. Thanks Sarah. Let's get this up. Okay, over there. Hi everyone, uh, and thanks for the introduction to the overall project, Sarah. Uh, delighted to uh, to be here. Uh, it's the, the contributions already have been incredible, and as a humble uh, Woodland Trust volunteer, uh, it gives me a huge and another kind of perspective on what's happening, uh, kind of globally in terms of conservation. Uh, starting with uh, my uh, kind of interest in, in the project, uh, my kind of concerns are with the intersection of photography with power particularly uh, militarism with civic life. The work was created both through photography and is about photography, particularly history of photography and the archive. Uh, the work explores the back rooms of warfare. Uh, the rehearsal spaces rather than the front, uh, front theatres of battle. I'm interested in the mechanics, the funding and the production of institutional violence. So my work in drone vision therefore kind of it referenced uh, drones quite obliquely. Uh, as my interest is in showing their cultural and actual invisibility, particularly when it's juxtaposed with the highly visible civic performance of the fighter jet in Sweden. I have presented on, on, the, on, on this, on the research and the artworks a number of times before. Uh, today is the short version. I chopped and chopped and cut it all down. Uh, and today will be bookended by two short films. The first one will be an excerpt from a, from a Saab corporate video. And my vision for uh, my film for the Drone Vision Project, Escalate, will be at the end. And hopefully in between, I'll give you a sense of the research process, uh, the locations and the collaborations that inform the work. So research is a key part of my working process and for the project I explored Swedish militarism through the context of Svenska Airplan AB company at Saab. Uh, the resulting artworks are a critique of the embeddedness and iconography of aerial warfare as a source of civic pride in Sweden and the contradictions of a neutral non-NATO nation with, that also has a significant ranking in the global armaments trade. The search took place through online SAB archives, through direct contact with SAB defence and security personnel, curators, librarians in Sweden, and included meetings with the SAB Arts Association and two Swedish Air Force pilots, uh, one of them with uh, over a thousand hours of drone operator experience in Mali and Afghanistan, and crucially in the Swedish municipal city of the shopping where the film and photographic series were made. So just before I ask Ben to kindly show us uh, the less than two minute excerpt from the Saab video, I'll tell you a little bit about the city that it was launched in. And shopping is the home of Saab. The company moved there from Trollhattan in 1937, just as war in Europe was imminent. Originally established by the Swedish government as a means of developing and supplying an airborne national defence system for the Swedish armed forces, Saab has developed an extensive defence and security portfolio as now operational on every continent and across 100 countries. Developing manufacturing fighter jets and other aircraft, including UAVs, drones, principally at the Saab Aeronautics Base in Lundshopping. Although with deals they've made with Brazil and South Africa, there's also now production manufacturing plants elsewhere. The company has grown from supplying one customer to many customers, becoming a significant player in the global arms trade as a result. So if I could just, <coughs> excuse me, ask Ben to give us the first, uh, first film. Uh, two points I want to make about the film, that's just an excerpt from it. Uh, you'll see from the flags, the kind of range of global customers, but also uh, just to make the point that, uh, and I'm indebted to a colleague, uh, Dr. Wayne Coatsy from University West, uh, Sweden, who has uh, produced a publication on uh, the Gripen deal with South Africa. Uh, the Yaz Gripen fighter jet program is the most expensive and largest industrial project ever undertaken by Sweden. Uh, Saab is the largest private employer in the city of Ling Shopping, directly employing over 4,000 people with further 15,000 employed in aviation clusters and industries, relating to 10% of the municipal population of 150,000. 
the foundational role of military aircraft and the growth and prosperity of the area where the Swedish Air Force helicopter and flight schools are also based is materially signified within the urban landscape of Winterping. These are Draken and Viggen, previous fighter jet series and one of a number that are displayed at the entrance to the city. A deeper, slightly more kind of complex acknowledgement of the, of the company's investment of, in the area is to be found in the Fluvapa Museum, the Swedish Air Force Museum, situated at the perimeter of the Malmen Air Base in the city. A sense of human scale has been introduced to the pan, this pantheon through the installation of a family room decorated in the style of each decade of the aircraft production from the 1940s to the 1980s. Arguably, these suggest a correlation between the citizens of the family space with a wider cultural identity that's dependent on the militarised narrative of the state. This is an image uh, of the Berkvik Staten, which means mountain workshop. Uh, the long, this and on the this hand side, the, the right hand side, this is uh, the Berkvik Staten uh, escalator. It's the longest in Sweden when it's constructed, 30 metres in length to carry workers, workers from the surface to an underground manufacturing bunker. Aware of the impending threat of war, uh, Saab excavated and built this underground factory to manufacture aircraft during World War II and throughout the Cold War period. Operational until the 1990s, currently the space is maintained and used as a storage area. A vast subterranean bunker of 20,000 square metres, the Berkwick Staten is, is under the streets of Ling Shopping, situated under today's Saab Aeronautics HQ. These symbiotic city spaces, the Fugapen Museum and the Berkwick Staten, coexist in divergent, divergent and connected ways. One is a place of display and spectacle, actively attracting visitors and presenting a harmonization of the military sphere with home and family. The other, an obsolete site of military manufacturer, is closed and withheld, secretive and accessible only to workers during the time of production and now only to specific interest groups. Both are significant repositories, literally and metaphorically, not only of the military aircraft and ephemera and archives, but of the constructed narratives and formulations of a cultural identity that connects and therefore normalises to an extent the relationship between militarism and, and civic life. Although I wasn't able to physically ac uh, access the Berkford Satin space, it wasn't for lack of trying, it was a key feature of the research and it continued to kind of haunt my ideas in the making of the artwork particular existence and technology of this wooden escalator. It assumed the form of a dialectic between above and below, the subterranean to the potentially stratospheric, the verticalizing impetus that correlates to the pathway of the drone. The image to the left uh, is of a slightly staged uh, office area in the former factory. You can see a little fika, a little coffee pot, uh, aircraft manuals, etc. And I've included this to show uh, the frame photograph on the wall near the open door in detail on the following slide. This is the image on the left uh, of the close-up, is a close-up with the frame photograph on that wall in the, in the abandoned mountain workshop office. It's an archival image showing the former Saab Scania products of aircraft, truck and car grouped together on the runway. The other is a contemporary image of a Saab airborne early warning and control spy plane, a Greek fighter jet and a Neuron drone uh, on a runway and vid cell. Neuron is being produced in association with uh, a French company called Dassault. Vid cell is in the northern part of Sweden, which again, despite, not being, despite Sweden not being part of NATO, is used by them for training and other purposes. It's also the area where the indigenous Sami people live and herd reindeer. And we hear more about that from Ignatio later. The similarities and connectedness between the images are striking, reflecting a kind of effort to incorporate and harness the motive pool of the archival photograph image into the contemporary narrative of the company. This triumvirate suggests through the relationship, a continuum between the past and the present, not just the logistic, logistical militarism inherent in the subjects of the photograph, the overarching strategy of the military industrial complex itself. So I'm going to ask Ben to kindly show the last uh, video. That's the video that I produced for Own Vision. Uh, and after that, I just have one sentence that will connect to this video with the first one that you saw. So if you don't mind, Ben, will I stop sharing? No.
early Monday morning, it's not my favorite. I just want to stay in bed, just for 10 more minutes. It's easy to get lost in daydreams. Thinking about the weekend, longing for the next one. I guess that's what Mondays are for. Routine, me leaving your kids at school, sleepwalking to the bus, casually kissing your loved ones goodbye, not thinking twice. I love that. In fact, it's my job. Because in my world, boring morning means we're doing all right. It means we're safe. That's why I'm a pilot. To keep my country safe, to keep my family safe, to keep everyone's boring morning safe. A thousand miles an hour. It's our thinking edge that helps our customers break through technological barriers, logistical barriers, financial barriers. Our way of thinking protects your way of life. Gripen. Skeldar. Neuron. Falcon. Eagle. Thanks, Ben. Okay, uh, thank you, everyone. I think I'll hand over to Beja now. The last point I was going to make about the video connected to the first video is uh, that Saab group and launch in 2016 uh, happened in the same Saab arena where I uh, recorded some of that film uh, in Moon Shopping. So thank you.
everyone, and I'll hand over now to uh, Bejat. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I think I was muted for a bit. I just said something. Um, I'm uh, super excited to be part of this uh, event. And uh, I'm really, um, I think I'm going to make uh, this uh, talk as two part. One part is going to be going through a few slides this, uh, as a PowerPoint. But also in the second part, I will be showing five minute uh, film uh, of the project. And I'm going to start with uh, showing uh, this um, uh, view of the installation. And the reason for this is the uh, three drawing on the on the side that um, uh, that was part of the installation. And it was uh, it's not uh, included in this presentation, but also was uh, a part of the installation to be as a way to invite people in the space to uh, experience or see the film. And um, the film is 20 minutes and the shorter version is about five minutes, so it's one fourth of the film itself. And uh, in the space, you will hear Mohanna Damani, the, the guy, the, the, my subject, uh, the person I worked with for the, for the project, for the drone vision. Um, and the three drawing is uh, is based on 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 the, on the YouTube uh, footages, uh, captures, uh, stills from the YouTube that I uh, that I had it from him. And as you see in here from the right uh, is the uh, start of the uh, the bombing where people hear that uh, a house being bombed. Uh, the second in the middle was people rushing into the uh, into the house uh, and taking uh, Mohammed out, and the third one on the left is passing by the body passing by. So my subject matter was this uh, guy on the left, uh, uh, who I worked with uh, for several months during 2017 to middle of 2018. And uh, before I start to um, uh, say more about the, the project. I would like to just go back uh, uh, just to give you a bit of a, a examples of uh, why I ended up making this work and why I was interested in uh, taking part in the drone version. Um, so my uh, my I came from the country where since I was uh, four years old uh, uh, the war was started and I, I grown up in the in the in the environment where uh, where the war was part of uh, our everyday life, let's say. And uh, just a year before, a few, uh, two years before applying for the drone version, there was uh, uh, my, my big interest for, for, uh, for uh, art in general. And my approach to art was to, to look at the landscape and see how the landscapes are um, erasing their own history and how um, but also my my approach was kind of in a mixed way with the drawing and photography and um, uh, but mainly uh, like if I put it in two half partly working with different communities but the other part was to work individually and uh, when I when I get the uh, permission to work with uh, Rasta Gott. Um, uh, a camp uh, in the suburb of Venchbori, uh, uh, just outside of Gothenburg. Uh, my first question was, uh, am I allowed to be in this space? Am I allowed to make this space as a, as a, uh, as, an, uh, as, a as a point of departure for the, this art project? And I think I, I took, um, uh, I took a, a approach as, as, as I was making the work about myself as because uh, when I moved to UK, I, I was waiting for my decision for 10, uh, 11 years in the UK. And I, I spent most big 
chunk of my life in the UK in the camp. So for me, going back to the camp was to talk about my own experience. Uh, but also beyond that was the, the, the idea of um, talking to the people. Uh, as, uh, as you see in the image, there was people who was willing to take and share their experience uh, with me and be part of the project and including Palestinians who were scared of balloons and kites and so I was in a really sensitive environment to uh, to do this project. Um, every every um, uh, flight that I did in the in the camp was to, to with with other peoples so in the on the on the left uh, yeah. on the right the second on the right was Mohammed who I he came to uh, uh, um, greet me in the in the bus stop with this this circle that is uh, uh, inside the camp uh, that you that you see is the bus where you uh, would be uh, you know landed in the camp and this camp is a, is a biggest camp in in, um, uh, in in Sweden. So uh, when I when I heard uh, when I when I approached Mohammed, he was saying that uh, he has he, he he went through experience of uh, drone and uh, uh, what do you call uh, aerial bombing, but he has no rem he has he can't remember anything. So my my approach to this project was to start from somewhere that he has would start with someone who has no ex, no memory of what happened to him, what happened to him in the in the past, um, and he came with this foot, uh, video footage of him being dragged out of the house uh, for the sake of the time that I cannot really show uh, the work, and. Um, so in order to make a sense of what happened to him, I needed to even go back a bit uh, more uh, with him to, exp to, to explain what happened. Uh, uh, and it ended up having hours and hours of uh, 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 recording about uh, what happened to him. So we, we as you see, the, ti the title of the work is It's a Turn Doctor. And uh, the title, it comes from this graffiti works was written on the wall in Syria and um, and became the, 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 the main starting point of the revolution uh, even until until now from 2011. Um, so I'm going to make um, uh, after this slide I'm going to I'm going to ask Ben to to to, sh to share the, the film. Um, but um, it was my experience of, with, with, with this with this uh, project was, uh, of course, the question was who is going to be flying the drone because there was a, at the time in 2017 there was no permission for uh, you have to have a permission in Sweden to to fly a drone. But my big interest was to actually up make this project in another part of the world where. But there was a war happening. Uh, but I think at the end of, at the middle of this project, I, I became more interested and took advantage of being in Sweden, and then look at it, and look at the subject in a completely different angle. Uh, and um, and so this is uh, where I I I, I came across uh, Mohammed, where he talked about the experience. So the the film is a bit short. It's five minutes, but it's, it's still you can't really get a, a full image of it. I'm just gonna quickly say what what is what it was about. Um, it was about uh, Mohammed and his wife being sleeping on the second floor of their house, and the bombs come through. And this is what people told Mohammed about the uh, about the event. That's he, he couldn't remember anything else. So, and he always talked about the capacity of body to be not able to hold more information than it can't hold, let's say. Um, and uh, and the, the, the journey started with him start talking about the revolution until at the point where some, his mom say what happened to him. 
And uh, before I, I, I start the film, I just want to say this is uh, the, 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 the main three, four characters uh, of, the, um, of, of the people who Muhammad is uh, talking about in the, in the film. So I'm going to stop the share now, and uh, I think I'm going to end my presentation after, uh, after the film. Thank you. So Ben, if you um, share the film, that would be great. Thank you. كنت بشتغل محاسب بشركة صرافة وبدرس هندسة حواسيب بمدينة درعا في سوريا I see a black bar on the top دار 2011 هذا اللي غير حياتي وحياة السوريين لما قام النظام باعتقال الأطفال بعد ما كتبوا على حيطان المدرسة عبارات مناوئة للنظام من أحد العبارات إنه إجاك الدور يا دكتور وقاصدين بها رئيس الج... رئيس الدولة فالعائلات راحت تتوسط مشان يطالعوا هدول الأطفال ما استجاب لهم وحدد بأنه راح يرسل جنود لاغتصاب النساء والجاب أطفال مؤيدين للرئيس فضلينا فترة بهالفترة هاي اعتقلوا أخي اللي أصغر مني فأهلي قرروا يضلوا بسوريا لحتى فك أسر أخي من المعتقل ظلينا ناطرين عشر شهور تحت الظروف الصعبة من قصف وظروف حياتية صعبة نستنى أخي المعتقل لحتى نسمع من نسمع عنه خبر فبعد عشر شهور أفرجوا عنه واجتمعت العيلة وكنا فرحانين كثير لأنه أخي طلع من المعتقل فخلال حلقة يلولة صار حدث مفصلي بحياتي طبعا هي القيلولة ممكن أطول قيلولة بحياتي بحيث أني نمت بسوريا على تختي بغرفتي وفقت بالأردن بمشفى ما بعرف وين أنا وما بعرف على, على, على أي تخت موضوع بعدها نفقت بمشفى الرمثة بالأردن طبعا كان أخي هناك موجود جنبي بعدها بشوي حكيت مع أمي حكيت 
التليفون مع امي فامي حكت لي انه فاتت فاتت قذيفه من الشباك وانفجرت بنص الغرفه بيني وبين زوجتي بعدها سمعوا صوت كبير فورا اجوا يركضوا لقوا الغرفه كلها سواد مو مبين شيء فاتوا جابوا البيل وصاروا يقاضوا فشافوا رجلي ام اجت امي سحبتني من رجلي وطلعتني لبرا واختي حملت زوجتي وطلعتها لبرا وكل شيء بحمله من بلدي هو جسم مليان بالجروح وشظيه قريبه من الكليه وطبعا ذاكره مليانه بالذكريات عن هذا اليوم الاليم Thank you again. Yeah, Ignacio, it's over to you now. Mute myself. Is that good? Um, thank you, Bajat. Thank you, everyone. It's really great to be part of of this um, event and then to share our ideas and our share our our. In um, our use of drone technologies um, in this context, I think is really interesting and it's great for us and, a, and it's an opportunity to get together again, since we haven't uh, get together with, with Sarah for um, Barry and Bejet for quite a long time. So it's a great opportunity to share the work with you. Um, so um, just to give a brief introduction, I am an artist and a researcher who explores uh, places made vulnerable through the exploitation of ecologies by colonial intervention and intense capitalization. So over the last 10 years, I have devoted to the understanding of sites and landscapes that although often neglected are of global significance. Places under pressure from extractive activity in South America and Europe. My most recent works, this is the ones that I'm going to explore today, um, explore the possibilities of drone technologies as a tool for resistance within the struggles for decolonization. Through, so through um, investigative analysis and ethical practices, um, my methodology is akin to a forensic investigator in my desire to uncover and expose highly ambivalent power dynamics. My investigations um, is completely posed by multiple, is done through multiple layers that comprise my individual research processes that contribute to larger, vibrant collaborations with activists, artists, scientists, writers, and indigenous peoples. Um, so collaboration is indeed um, a very important uh, part of my um, investigations and the sites that I work with. Such as this one that is a, um, walk, uh, walking mining tool in collaboration with the London uh, Mining Network that it was created as a result of my exhibition Tales from the Crust uh, at Art Catalyst in London in 2019. Um, the work that I'm going to talk about today is Little Yago Abda, Drones and Drums, um, 
that is the video installation that it was commissioned by the the Hasselblad Foundation and Valent Academy in the in the project um, Drone Vision led by Sarah Tak. So Little Yagoabda Drones and Drums is a video installation with surround sound that explores the use of drone technologies as a tool for minority indigenous um, resistance to the protest of Galak mining operation in Jokmok, northern Norbotten country, uh, northern Sweden. So the project was developed in close collaboration with our activists and Sami families living and working in the area and combines extensive field work and visual documentation. So I'd just like to give you a little brief introduction of who our Sami people are. Um, the Sami people are indigenous minority whose traditional ancestral land Sapmi crosses across modern nations and state of Finland, Norway, Sweden, and Russia. The systematic subdivision, expropriation, and industrialization of Sapmi has, has resulted in the dispossession of, of historical indigenous land rights and the fragmentation of Sami cultural belonging and identities. So Galak North is one of the largest iron ore deposits in Europe, which has not been exploited yet. The UK based a mining company, Beewolf Mining PLC, has applied for a 25 year concession exploitation of the site um, to establish a mine on this site, which you're seeing at the moment on the Google uh, Earth map. Um, and it's a it's an application that is currently being reviewed by the Swedish government. So this is the plan of uh, Galak North. Kalak is in Swedish, I use the Galak, which is uh, the Sabmi uh, version of the word. Um, and then if the mining permit would go ahead, there will be a larger exploitation of um, natural um, resources in the area, which include uh, copper, um, also um, uranium, and then that will open also the path for um, a much wider um, exploitation and industrialization of the site, which this would disrupt seriously the migration path of the reindeer. <laughs> So um, my project um, kind of draws a connection between the drone and the drums, um, a, a connection, the, the drone and the Sami understanding of the drum as, as the, the drum as a boat of, this, of, the, of the soul that allows the Shami or the Noadi to travel between material and spiritual, spiritual worlds. So while the Sami um, drum permits the understanding of the cosmos through the iconic representation of the drum head, which you, the image you are seeing on the on the left, uh, the 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 drone permits our um, the um, uh, the expansion of the uh, field work or the field of vision, um, suggesting uh, what is like a constant constant geospatial overwatch. So. Um, in Little Yagobda, I was interested in the understanding how the drone view and the drone uh, make a manifest to reconcile this technological and the spiritual in the counter protest against the sense of colonialism and deforestation of extractive industries in Sapmi. So there's, um, this is the, also both drones and drums um, are living at the same time at the protest. I experienced that they both use as a, as a way of resistance to the exploitation of Sapmi by activists. And drones, of course, the drums, the drones, sorry, I have been used obviously as a contested, very contested device, for example, in the standing rope protest in the US where the US government forbidden the use of drones. Uh, but they have also been used um, by uh, the Chilean government to uh, um, to in, um, make um, guilty Mapuche indigenous communities to establish um, 
wildfires in the in the south of Chile. So they are co very contested devices. And then um, what I'm interested in the use of drone technologies is how can it's possible to use um, to use them as counter surveillance and the, to create counter narratives of those um, military and um, uh, corporate users. So, so um, during this, um, there are several research trips I've met with activists and Sami families working and living in the area threatened by the mining activities. From the beginning of the project, I became interested in finding ways to collaborate with these communities. So my initial, my initial idea was to bring drone technologies to Galak as to monitor the progress of Beowulf mining. On the first visit, I met with the activist Mus Agistan and Henrik Blind. Mus Agistan is the person who is at the, in, the, in the photograph, um, who were already using drones as a tool for make visible from above what is happening at ground level. So communication across social media platforms, the drone images uh, make uh, visible the impact and disruption of Submiland by, um, by um, multinational corporations. So with the guidance of uh, my friend uh, Liz Marie Nielsen, I documented from above the largest iron mines of the area. This is an image of Mus Agustan. Um, and I created a narrative that weaves together um, both the use of drone technologies by, um, by activists, but also how can we use drone technologies as a way of mapping the larger exploitation of Sabmi land. Um, the video work is divided in four chapters and we will share, I'll ask Ben in a minute to share the video link to the teaser of the work. Uh, the, um, this is, um, this is, um, this is images from the from the video work um, that is divided in four chapters, as I say, forest, water, uh, and this is some of the exhibitions that has, the, the the piece has been taking part of. Like the there was an exhibition um, game of drones at the Zeppelin Museum Friedrich Zafer in Germany, and uh, there was also shown at the IT Museum in in northern Sweden, um, at the Salvador Museo Salvador. Salaria Savara, Yem Santiago, Chile. Um, this is also stills from the video. Um, and the last chapter of resistance. So um, this is an uh, images from the last chapter, resistance. Um, and this is different installations that's so been shown in around eight museums. Uh, and the human nature of the body museum in Sweden. Um, and that's my presentation. I would like to ask Ben if you possible to share um, uh, by chat the, the link to the video work to the community, um, which um, you can all watch. It's 18 minutes speech, but also if it's possible now to share the teaser of the, of the video piece with the community. And thank you very much. Look forward for the conversation.
saknade Se till bäcknen komma hem till mig Se till mitt ex att jag saknar bas. Se till prästen att jag åkte fast Se till Stockholm inget rädda mig Se till din son och passa sig Se till din dotter och skydda sig Och se till folket och hylla mig, hylla mig. Se till pengar och regna ner Se till sommaren att den är sen Okay, um, uh, thank you. Um, I'm now going to chair the discussion with Ignacio, Bejat and Vari and respond to the questions that have arisen. Mm -hmm. um, the first question I'd like to respond to is one from Anna Jackman and thank you. If I can take it first and then I'll open up, mm -hmm. I'll respond to the particular question about what did you feel your responsibility was in your creation of images and film. Um, and this is around also, the, the, it's foregrounded by the question, experiences and understandings of access. So maybe I should just also point out that the three artists who were commissioned, initially mm. what we had done is we gave a research and development award to five artists. And those five artists therefore had a modest fee and the time to understand whether their idea of a project um, and collaboration with the community was going to be welcome, whether the idea had a kind of feasibility, whether there was the scope to, to, to develop a project that was ethical, uh, that were foregrounded uh, questions of trust. And from those five, uh, the three artists that you have seen from today were selected in Gothenburg. Um, more broadly around access, um, I should also highlight that the, the in terms of Lahore, and Nicosia, I wasn't the curator because I don't have the local knowledges. Um, and so therefore I worked in collaboration with uh, a curator in Mankareshi in Pakistan and a curator, Yanis Tomasis in Cyprus uh, because of those critical questions around access and more broadly um, the geopolitics. But touching on that question of access, <clears throat> excuse me, in 2018, uh, we hosted a symposium and the idea, because I was the only one that had met all the artists, and the idea was we would all gather in Sweden and it was a, going to be a day-long symposium. The three artists that were commissioned in Pakistan, however, were denied access by the Swedish embassy. Uh, so they were denied a visa. Um, so the, the question of access uh, uh, about access to a country, to territory, it is a complex one. But I, I think maybe to throw that question now back to the artists in terms of maybe some of the, the both the ethics and the problematics of uh, collaboration with communities of place or communities of interest um, and how that connected to the broader questions of warfare, warfare surveillance and protest and the politics of visibility and verticality. So maybe Bedja, you want to start and, and then, yeah. Yeah, um, I think something, a point that I, I didn't mention in my presentation was how I choose the location uh, through few meeting with the, uh, with the camp. Within the camp, there was another community um, uh, a com uh, all, it becomes a company right now. It's it, it called Sport Group Network, where I had multiple meetings with them and had a talks and uh, um, what do you call um, uh, call out for people to come and uh, talk to me. Um, and uh, and through this discussion, I found out that uh, although we have this other side of the the, the drone usage of it. It's in, in my interest was the the, the, the war side of the, the drone use uh, more, and uh, there was people saying in the war in Syria they use drone to to find a clear path for escaping, and I think that was kind of my my starting point to to take the drone back to the to to uh, to the place where people escaped from the war and have them. Fly it over their camps and uh, their 
their living spaces and uh, to see what kind of uh, conversation that might uh, uh, produce in a way. But again, uh, with being in the camp was completely problematic in many ways. Uh, I didn't want to, what do you call it, uh, highlight or make a place uh, exotic in a way for people to come and see it. This is a, this is a camp because it's a pretty large camp, uh, largest at the time in Sweden, where hosting 1,500 people. Um, and, uh, and I think when 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 you take the, the when you when you take this um, the, the drone the drone back to the space it gives you with a question of different uh, seeing and verticality and power you 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 have a different way of seeing but you also have a sense of loss in the space because in 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 most of the times i had people to to tell me and navigate me uh, around the image that I was dealing with, it was a, it was a kind of dis, dislocation. Um, but to say it, it's, it, it was a learning experience for me, both to learn, uh, look through the drone, but also use it. I think it was a, it was a big part of my, uh, my approach in, in the sense. But also use story and tell a story through, um, uh, through use of uh, drone uh, images was, a, was a, a bit of struggle for me. If that answer the question, so mm. And I don't know whether Beja, do you want to go about the, uh, talk about the collaboration with Sami? Um, I mean, I I was really interested in the in the kind of the agency of the drone as a tool for kind of um, as, as as a tool for kind of um, interfere in this political and ecological uh, dispute. So then how can the drone be, be as, 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 as kind of an agent, an active agent in the, not actually in the mapping and the, and the protest and, 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 this, and the, to, us, to help us to fight in the struggle of, with the decolonization. So then the, 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 color, the collaboration with the Sami was really important because it was just not as a way of me going there with I originally thought we, we discussed this I, my original idea was me bringing drone technologies into into the landscape to use the drone as a way of mapping but, but, but then it came out that um, because they were already using drones the, the project was much more about the documentation and the communication of their struggles rather than my uh, my vision and actually what it happened at the end, and I, I ended up learning from them, and then they teach me how to use the drone, how to map the land, how can we share. I've learned so much through this process, rather than me bringing the technology, which would be a more colonizing kind of um, strategy, is how can I learn from, from the use of drone technology, um, yeah but based on this idea of the drone as an active agent in the fight against the decolonization. So yes, and then that was really, and then from there, um, I have used the drone since then pretty much actively in my work. And then I'm using now other forms of, um, uh, from photogrammetry, I now use uh, 3D mod modeling and maps from photogrammetry perspective. So I use the drone to create um, images of the future and kind of um, much more um, different ways, you know. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if that responds there. The and and Mari, if you want to maybe touch on, because you were, I mean, in your account, there was a, the refusal of, an, of access, mm. physical access. Not just physical, but uh, what was uh, really kind of clear because uh, I've kind of previous projects, I've worked kind of directly with the military agency. I've worked with RAF and the Royal Navy and MOD. And uh, so part of my work is, is to negotiate access and, and permission to areas that are, that are normally kind of closed. And I do kind of eventually kind of get there. But what was striking about this project was how much Saab did not want to speak about drone production. Uh, the five drones that were mentioned in my video there just at the end 
they're actively, of course, like any uh, kind of armaments company, fully uh, involved in the production of drones, but they don't appear in the, came, in the same kind of visibilities and kind of iconographies of something as uh, iconic as a, as a fighter jet in the kind of Swedish narrative of, uh, of kind of protection or uh, of a kind of, a kind of worthy uh, export. Uh, so that was really, really kind of striking. Uh, they've even gone so far as to create separate companies in uh, limb shopping. Uh, so they can say, well, no, we, we don't make drones. They, these companies make kind of drones. But if you contact the companies, uh, their emails are all at sabgroup.com. So, uh, yes, it was it was interesting. I tried various kind of methods, including uh, speaking to members of the, the SAB. There's an arts association in, in Lynn Shopping in the, as part of the kind of aeronautical base that have been there for kind of, uh, you know, as long as the base have been there. Uh, so I, I also tried to kind of negotiate an access to the Bertford Staten through a kind of a more kind of culturally based angle, but that kind of didn't happen either. So I suppose the work then became about that refusal to uh, kind of acknowledge the, the kind of production of, of drones that are kind of taking place kind of behind the scenes when the, the, the real kind of uh, visibility continues on something as, uh, as expensive and uh, exportable as the Gripen uh, fighter jet. And the next question I'll point to is from Laura, so I'm going to abbreviate it because of time. Um, if I go answering first and then we go uh, and do a round, um, it's about the question of the relative ease of moving vertically with drones and how that may have changed um, approaches to questions and problems that spark our interest or how does this build on other dimensionalities of your methods? So in, in if I answer first as a kind of artist researcher curator, um, initially with this project, I was interested in, in the politics of verticality and the politics of visibility, the idea of to being seen without being seen. Um, what I did and, and what what is I would now move it into is, and what we didn't touch upon, across the three exhibitions quite willfully was the question of sonic violence. So with military drones, you may be aware that um, they often fly lower than the altitude uh, that they can and uh, they fly uh, in order to be seen. Um, and they actually, in the construction of them, uh, the, they could be quiet, they could be stealth-like, but they've chosen to engineer um, a violence. So we chose in all of the exhibitions that there was no sound of a military drone because in the three exhibitions, we knew we were welcoming people who had fled drone warfare and we didn't want to provide any triggers uh, to uh, the, the, the body reaction of trauma to that sound. Um, but you may have noticed when I put all the names together, um, Stephen Graham was one of the people at the round table, and obviously he's written the book from satellite to bunker. So this was really the question of what what does it mean uh, for photography? Uh, if photography becomes data, um, and what does it mean to to see from above and at a distance? So that dimensionality, I wonder, for you as artists, and for many of you, this was the first time thinking about drones or using drones if, I mean, Ignacio, you said you've, you're now integrating drone use in your artworks, um, what the consequence is. Uh, I don't, I don't know, maybe. Um, well, the consequences is, is like, uh, I think it's a really, uh, first of all, it's a very effective tool of visualization of mapping, but also also, as as as, um, because extend this way fields of vision. But one of the things that perhaps I was more interested in, in the drone technology is how it can be used um, within the within indigenous communities uh, as a as a way of supporting traditional worldviews. So I mean, I'm interested like in this idea of like something like as a, as a technological as a drone that obviously has a lot of um. um Kind of contrary contra debate within it because it's built with with the um, with the with the rare metals that they are make 
criticizing. I'm criticizing mining industries, but the drone itself is is built with rare metals, so it comes with a lot of contradictions. The the drone technologies, if if you if if, but also how can be but kind of be integrated into other forms of knowledge and um, image production, um, and then especially if you if you if you integrate them with um, indigenous knowledge and then uh, talk about technology using as, as a way of supporting traditional worldviews. That's why I've been really interested in generally about this um, this this conference and this gathering because the um, the for example how can drone technologies be used to support I don't know uh, like it, uh, detection of illegal logging and mining in the, in in some remote areas. Um, um, and then, yeah, I don't know. It took a lot, so I, I give. <laughs> and budget. Um, yeah, I, 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 to be honest, since I have uh, done the project, the drone version, I, I, I hardly uh, used it. Uh, maybe a few occasions. The, the, but I think in the examples of the the camp was uh, really interesting because. Um, uh, the people who collaborated with me, there was the first time they would see the scale of the uh, space that they lived in. And uh, and uh, actually, th just a few days ago, I was checking the sport group network that they have actually now, a, uh, what do you call, bought uh, a drone that they're using as part of their activities and works and the community works and stuff. So it's on their first, uh, what do you call uh, website? It's a, it's a, it's a really uh, uh, aerial view of where where they are based. So I don't know. I'm not in the position of uh, commenting on 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 um, how that could be used in many different ways as a form of knowledge. But I think um, in the in in the in the forms of or in the in the site specificity of the the camp that the drone was. Um, something that, uh, as Ignacio was saying, that we, we learn through from it a lot, but also uh, pretty sensitive to use as people came from Syria, Afghanistan, Somalia, and other places where they literally fl f scared of any object above them, including, I don't know, a balloons. And, and, I, and I had hours of people talking to me about how terrifying it is to see an object over them and the sound of sometimes um, this flying uh, occasion that you see in Sweden, uh, you hear in Sweden that uh, um, a, a fly goes over you, a poor plane. We have a different experience with it. And that's a pretty different uh, approach in a way. And, I, and I'm really interested in this whole conversation that we had in the past two days in comparison to other way of thinking in Middle East and uh, yeah, other part of the world. And Vari, I'll probably now to you and then probably after Vari, we'll, we have to hand back to Naomi because yeah. we are we're overrunning. Uh, so uh, maybe for you, because yours was also about the airspace as territorial because slim chopping, mm. the buildings can be built at a high Yeah, there's no skyscrapers. They have to keep the skylines clear, uh, which you could see the final kind of frames of the video. Uh, that's, that's why it's been interesting attending today. Uh, I struggle to find uh, positivity around drones. Uh, to me, they are very much part of the kind of uh, verticalizing and ever increasing forms of global surveillance. No technology is neutral. Photography is not neutral. Uh, and even when they're used for the kind of positive purposes that have been kind of described by, by, by some of the contributors, and it's great to see anything decent coming out of a, a drone form of vision. Uh, I, I, would, I don't use them in, in my work and I would struggle to... Uh, I struggle to see them as other than a form of big data archiving. They uh, kill uh, through algorithms, uh, Reaper uh, maps and, and patterns and, and plans what, what they think it's going to happen. Uh, so in a sense, they're, they're creating their own archives uh, and operators are, are kind of using that to send information. Uh, 
that that about people about movements about life that uh, people can be targeted because of a kind of the way it has been kind of well you all, you all know, kind of know this tabulated in the kind of drone uh, kind of gathering of that surveillance uh, so I suppose I would end up by saying thank you for giving me some kind of positive insights on uh, use of drones but I'm far from convinced. Okay, so we'll leave it there. Um, I just want to apologise, I didn't get to all the questions that were posed. Um, so thank you mm -hmm. for the engagement and I'm, I do apologise for that. And I do also apologise that we did overrun by five minutes. So, so thank you to everyone and I'll hand back now to Nomi. Thanks so much, Sarah, and thanks to all the artists for a really exciting and in some moments very moving panel and a really different way into the question of drones and um, landscapes. So thank you for that. Um, lots to think about. And please do use the chat function to keep going with those conversations as there was much more in the discussion that we didn't quite get to.